Hi everyone, welcome to the fourth part of challenging themes in topography. The topic that we are going to discuss today is drainage pattern and direction of flow. Meaning of drainage pattern. A drainage pattern refers to the arrangement of streams, rivers and lakes within a specific drainage basin. In symbol, it means how the streams in a particular drainage basin is appear to be when seen from bird's eye view. Otherwise, when we see the drainage system on a map, does it have any specific shape or arrangement? If there are any, that is what is a drainage pattern. And of course, there is certain pattern which we can see on a map. And these pattern depends on the lithospherical characters, which is not important for us. We just need to learn at least six different types of drainage pattern. As per the syllabus, the topic is to identify drainage. Within that, to identify the pattern and to identify the direction of the flow of the river. These are the two things related to drainage. Before we start learning drainage pattern, let us understand three different types of streams in our topographical map. The first category is called the perennial stream. Perennial streams are streams that flow throughout the year, means streams that contains water throughout the year are called perennial streams. These streams are drawn using blue lines. But we have to be a little bit careful while understanding this because there are few canals in our study area which are also given in blue color. The second type of drainage is or the stream is seasonal stream or dry streams. These are the streams that flows only during rainy season and will remain dry in the remaining time of the year. These streams are drawn using black color. The third category of streams are called dry streams with perennial water channel in it. There are few rivers, particularly a few large rivers, which are dry but has a perennial channel flowing through the middle all throughout the year. These kind of rivers are called dry streams with perennial water channel. Types of drainage pattern. I have shown you the syllabus a couple of minutes ago. There is nothing specified in that. So we have to study at least these six different types of pattern which were there in the older syllabus. These are dendritic, trellis, radial, disappearing, intermittent and inland drainage. These are the six patterns that we are going to discuss in today's video. We are starting with dendritic pattern. If a main river and its tributaries appears to be a tree with lot of branches, then such a pattern is called dendritic pattern is very common in our study area. Trellis pattern. In trellis pattern, rivers flow almost parallel to each other and the interesting thing is that their tributaries join the main river almost at 90 degree angle as in this picture or as in this map. We have the main stream flowing from northeast to southwest direction and the tributaries of these two rivers are joining them almost at 90 degree angle. This kind of a pattern is called trellis drainage pattern. Third one is radial pattern. When rivers move outward into different directions from a central point, then the pattern is called radial pattern. These kind of patterns are seen in and around hilly areas. If there are volcanic mountains like this or any other hill from which rivers originates and flows to different direction, then the pattern will appear to be radial in nature. These kind of drainage patterns are called radial drainage pattern. The fourth one is disappearing pattern. Just like the name says, a stream disappearing on its way before joining another water body. Such streams or such patterns are called disappearing drainage pattern. Here in this pic, there are a lot of streams. Almost all of them are starting from the northwest direction and they are flowing towards the southeast. If you observe carefully, you can see a sort of contour lines on the northwestern side of the map. So that's a hilly area. So from there, the rivers are originating and they are flowing towards south as well as southeast, but they are not reaching anywhere. They disappear after flowing for few meters. These rivers are very common in the steady area. Our steady areas is in Gujarat and Rajasthan. Both are dry areas, areas of the sandy soil and very high temperature. Also, rainfall is scanty. In such areas, these kind of streams are 
pretty common. These are dry streams. They get water only during rainy season and the soil is sandy in nature. So before they can reach too far, they disappear. These kind of streams are the disappearing streams. There is another one. All these rivers are disappearing streams. These are starting from the mountain range in the south. They are flowing towards the north as well as northwest, but they are disappearing in between. You can see the presence of sand dunes as well as flat sands. So they are moving through sandy areas and they are disappearing. Such streams are called disappearing pattern or disappearing streams. When we draw this, this is what we do. Initially, a normal line, then dashes to show the disappearing nature of the stream and finally they are ending before joining another water body. Next one is intermittent stream. Streams that disappear while flowing and reappear again a little downstream. Such streams are called intermittent streams. Let me explain with the help of a map. So here in the middle we have a river which is flowing normally but after reaching certain distance it disappears. The dashes shows that the river is disappearing. That means the river is not visible on the surface. So river is flowing through the ground. It happens in these areas and after flowing certain distance through the ground it again reappears and flows as normal river. These kind of a pattern of streams are called intermittent streams. When we draw this, we draw a normal line then dashes to show the disappearing nature and again a normal line to show the reappearing and flow of the river. The final type is inland drainage pattern. Streams that empties into an inland water body or drains into an inland water body is called inland drainage pattern. There are few rivers in our study area which originates from hilly area and after flowing few kilometers they ends in another water body like a lake. These kind of streams form, form the inland drainage pattern. So drawing is like this, normal line to show the presence of river and finally they are ending into a water body like a lake. Now there are few more rivers which has their reverse characteristics. They originate from some inland water body and flows to a certain distance and sometimes disappears. They are disappearing streams, they are not inland drainage. So we have to make sure that the stream is flowing into the uh, lake and ending there. If it is happening the other way, if a stream is started from a lake and flows for a certain distance and disappears, then that is disappearing stream. So we have to make sure that the stream is ending in the water body, not originating from there. We can verify this by looking into the height differences. When we get the difference in height between two ends of this river, we will understand the direction of the flow. Based on that, we can determine whether the stream is flowing into the lake or flowing from the lake to outward. So we have to be very careful while identifying inland drainage pattern. How does the question comes in board exam? A sample question is like this. What is the pattern of drainage seen in grid square 6729 what i want to tell you is that drainage pattern within one grid square is always asked it's very rarely that we get a question asking the drainage of a large area most of the time question is asked to find the drainage pattern of rivers found within one grid square we know that one grid square is one square kilometer in area so this is how the questions are asked so we have to focus on that particular grid square and then we have to answer the question. So here, this is a question. Drainage pattern in grid square 6729. We have 6729 here in the top left side of the map. Let's concentrate in that grid square. When we observe this grid square, what we understand is the presence of a spot height, which is at a height of 437 meters. And then there are conduits which are somewhat circular in shape, they are closed conduits. It indicates that these are hilly areas. So from the top of a hill, rivers are originating and they are moving in all different directions. When you observe these dry streams, they are moving to northwest, northeast, southeast, southwest and in all different directions. So this is the drainage pattern. We can see streams moving outward into different direction from a highland. 
so the drainage pattern here is radial let's take another one so we have a grid square and there is a drainage pattern within this hope you might have already understood it looks like a tree with a lot of branches so the pattern is dendritic pattern moving to the next we have a similar shape there is also a dendritic pattern here it may look like a dendritic but when you observe this closely you will understand that the tributary streams are joining the main stream at 90 degree angle look at the main river flowing flowing through the center from northwest to southeast and look at the tributaries these tributaries are joining the main stream at 90 degree angle and their tributaries are also joining them at 90 degree angle so this is an example for a trellis drainage pattern here we have two different drainage patterns within one grid square so when you get two or more than one drainage pattern in grids in a grid square you are supposed to write the name of both the patterns i have checked this uh, surrounding area and found that the one on the top left side is a disappearing stream that stream is starting from the north and flowing to the south and it is disappearing here the other one is actually an inland drainage pattern the stream is starting from southeast and flowing into the lake so when you answer this question Right, we move both the drainage pattern, the disappearing and inland drainage pattern. Now here within this complete grid square, we have at least three main rivers. All of them are starting from this hilly area in the southeast. We can see the presence of condors, so it indicates hilly area. They are flowing towards the northwest and they disappear after flowing few meters. These are examples for disappearing in drainage pattern. Here is another one. Here the direction of the flow is from south to north. I have verified it with the help of sport heights and other heights in and around surrounding areas. So even if it is not there, you can use the sport height and the condors given here. So the sport height says that it is a hilly area because there is condors around it. So height is increasing from eastern side of the map to the western side. The parallel condors tells us the height difference. And if you see the rain, uh, river in the northern part, the river is flowing from west to east in the northern part. So the direction of flow in the northern part is west to east. So this river is originated from the south, flowing towards the north and finally taking a turn and going to the east direction. So the direction of the flow is from south to north and it is ending into a lake. So this is an example for an inland drainage pattern. Here is another one. If you take the full grid square, which is on the left side of the screen, there are two different drainage patterns within this also. The stream flowing towards the northeastern part of the map is flowing for a few kilometers, then it is disappearing and reappearing. So that is an example for intermittent stream. And when you look at the southwestern quarter of the map, there we have branching of tree-like formation, which means there are two patterns here, intermittent in the north, east and the dendritic pattern in the southwest there is another grid square with a stream in it hope you have already identified it there is another grid square with a spot height in the middle and height decreasing into all the different directions streams are all diverting from that central hilly area to different direction so identify and name this finish pattern one more to practice here is another one. Let's see another type of question which is asked. What is the difference between drainage pattern in grid square 2013 and 1422? It's a very simple question. You need to look into both 2013 and 1422 and identify the drainage patterns in both the grid square. That is what. Write the drainage patterns seen in both the grid squares. Then these are the difference. Suppose if it is a dendritic in one inland in another then you write dendritic pattern in two three two zero one three and inland range pattern in one four two two only now let's move to the second part of the video or second part of syllabus direction of flow means to identify the direction of the flow of rivers when we write the direction of flow of rivers we need to mention the direction from where the streams are starting to flow and to the direction to which 
they are flowing so there are two things one is the from direction and the to direction so example from north to south otherwise from south to southeast to north so when we write the direction of flow we have to mention the direction from where the river is starting and the direction to, to which it is flowing but when we direct the uh, sorry when, when we direct the compass direction of different places we don't need to mention both but here in the reverse case or when you write the flow of flow of rivers we have to mention and to, the, and to the direction to which it is flowing. So we have to be a little careful uh, to keep this in mind while answering the question. So how do we identify the direction of flow? For this purpose, we have to depend on certain clues and hints which are available on the map. There are a large number of combination of hints on a map. We have to just identify it. If an arrow is drawn on large rivers, show the direction of the flow. Once if we get the arrow showing the direction of flow, things are very easy. You can follow that river and find the direction of the river in any part of the map. That will be very easy if the arrow is available. But in certain cases, arrows are not available. In such cases, we find height difference in two different parts of a river. When we get the different height of two different parts of a river, then we can understand the direction of the flow. For this purpose, we will depend on height features like contour or spot heights or triangulated height, etc. So by identifying the height difference to a different point, we will find out the direction of the flow of the river. And while writing the direction, we can use eight cardinal points. That means along with the north, south, east, and west, we should use northwest, northeast, southeast, or southwest. Here we have a map with a main river in the middle. So the question is like this: What is the direction of the flow of Sipu River? So here, very close to the name. We have an arrow showing the direction of the flow. So once we have the arrow, we just need to look at the direction, the point where the arrow head to the arrow head shows the direction to which the river is flowing. So we can use eight cardinal point on this, and then we can write that the stream is flowing from northeast direction to southwest. Here is another example. What is the direction of the flow of the main river or the longest river in this map extract? So we have to look for height because we don't have the arrow here. So here in this point, height is 220 meters. We have a contour, and on the other end, the height is 189 meters. So we got the difference in height. We know that river cannot flow from a lower elevation to higher elevation. It always flows from a higher elevation to lower elevation. So the direction is from this 220 area to 189, which means the river is flowing from uh, southeast to northwest direction. Another example, this was given earlier for identify the drainage pattern, you might already identify it as disappearing, but what is the direction of the flow? So no evidence is available here, only one relative height is there, we cannot do anything with the help of that. One depression is also there, but we are not sure whether it is deeper than the relative height or not. So in these kind of cases, we have to start looking into the nearby areas. When we look into nearby areas, we will get clues. Here we have two spot heights. On one end we have 194 and the other end we have 183. The stream will be flowing from 194 to 183, otherwise from southeast to northeast. Find the direction of the flow of the main river in the map extract. Arrow is given, so I hope it will be very easy for you to do. And here in this case, find the direction of the stream given in the map extract. So you can see there are only three major streams here, and the longest one is flowing from either from west to east or east to east. Find out the direction of the flow with the help of the hints available in the map. So that is how we find the flow of rivers or the direction of the flow of rivers. I hope that is helpful to you. See you in another video. Thank you. Bye bye.